It's time for Uncle Izzy's Jazz Jamboree. Featuring Chicago Land's brightest jazz star. And now, your host, Barry Winograd. Welcome to Uncle Izzy's Jazz Jamboree. I'm your host, Barry Winograd. This is a show where we have a unique opportunity to present some of Chicago's finest jazz musicians. Uncle Izzy was examining a new labor contract recently with a union representative from one of his businesses. And after that, we thought today would be a great day to relax and reflect with Frank Portalese's trio, right here on Uncle Izzy's Jazz Jamboree. This is Uncle Lizzie's Jazz Jamboree. I'm your host, Barry Winograd. We're enjoying the music of the Frank Portalese Trio. We just heard Hail Fredonia. And next up, These Foolish Things Remind Me of You on Uncle Lizzie's Jazz Jamboree.
This is Uncle Lizzie's Jazz Jamboree. I'm Barry Winograd, and we're enjoying the wonderful music of guitarist Frank Bordelese with bassist Brian Sandstrom and at the drum set, Rusty Jones. The two songs we've heard so far, Hail Fredonia and These Foolish Things Remind Me of You. We'll be back with more music and talk in a moment right here on Uncle Lizzie's Jazz Jamboree. Uncle Izzy's Jazz Jamboree, Cable's newest home for music, conversation, and more. Join me, Barry Winograd, for a half hour of entertaining, educating, and exciting sounds of jazz for many of Chicagoland's finest practitioners. We'll listen, talk, and view with you an invigorating array of jazz cats of all generations. It's Uncle Izzy's Jazz Jamboree on your local public access channel. Welcome back to Uncle Lizzie's Jazz Jamboree. I'm your host, Barry Winograd. Our guests today, Frank Portalese, the guitarist and leader, joined by bassist Brian Sandstrom and the drummer Rusty Jones. And welcome to Uncle Lizzie's Jazz Jamboree, Frank. Thanks for having us, Barry. Oh, we're glad to have you here. Glad to participate in the celebration of your new recording, Last Call. And we've heard two songs so far. One, an original called Hail Fredonia. The second, a ballad, a wonderful jazz ballad, These Foolish Things Remind Me of You. And tell us a little bit about Hail Fredonia, for those of you who uh, don't remember the Marx Brothers. I've been getting a lot of people calling and thanking me for writing a song uh, for Fredonia University, and I just uh, say you're welcome, but the truth is <laughs> that uh, the title comes from the last line of the classic Marx Brothers movie, Duck Soup, uh, where Margaret Dumont is addressing the cabinet, and she uh, proclaims Hail Fredonia, and the cabinet throws food at her. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, uh, all the food flying and all the mayhem that exists at the end of that movie, is that uh, reflected in your music? Uh, you know, the movie <laughs> makes me laugh, and uh, I think laughter is really important in life and in music, uh -huh. too, so uh -huh. sure. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, let me ask you, in your uh, trio, which is uh, an interesting format, we'll talk about that in a moment, have you, uh, obviously you do jazz standards, have you written, though, a lot of songs for the trio? I've written, um, I don't know, a lot. I've written a half a dozen songs, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little more. Um, that are part of the repertoire. Right, right. Mm -hmm. It's it's good. I think it's good to have you know that in the mix uh, along with standards. Mm -hmm. Keeps me fresh and uh, keeps me more engaged uh, in in my playing. If I'm you know writing things that reflect various uh, strengths that I have or weaknesses that I'm trying to overcome. So, do you think that the trio format, speaking of strengths, the trio format showcases your strengths best as a musician? For me, I, I think I do enjoy it the most. Uh, you know, quartet has its challenges and, and 
duo is the hardest for me. Uh, it's, a, it's a challenge to work with a singer or with uh, another instrument, uh, uh, excluding bass. Bass makes it easy. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, trio, I really feel like uh, as, as though I can, you know, I can play hard. I can play the way I pretty much want to play. Do you like not having another chordal instrument so that you can sort of guide the chord changes in the songs yourself? Uh, if I'm playing with a piano in a, in a quartet, mm -hmm. uh, I just usually choose not to play any chords and I just become a horn and I just wait for the next gig, you know, so mm -hmm. that I can uh, assume the chordal position, yeah, yeah. you know. So as a youngster, when you started playing guitar, I assume you were part of that early rock and roll generation, which we both are, where we heard a lot of rock and roll on R&B, Motown, different sounds. Maybe that, not the earliest generation, uh, not but, the earliest. but an we, early we generation. The second generation. Yeah, we were the second generation. We were the psychedelic generation. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess we were. Played a, uh, <laughs> played a lot of Hendrix and Cream and yeah. all of that. But it, it, that uh, reflects using a lot of different sounds, a lot of different pedals, a lot of different types of guitars. You go see a Pat Metheny today, and a lot of times he'll have 12, 14 different guitars he's using during one show. But you, you just, just use one guitar. Now, as a teacher, as a performer, as an observer of the scene, do you find that is more, is there one way or another that musicians tend to go these days? Or as you grow older, do you find that you just want to emphasize one uh, instrument? Good question. I, I can speak for myself. Okay. Uh, I think that as the years went by, I progressed from a position of uh, playing the guitar more idiomatically, playing the guitar just as a, as a tool, as a set of strings and a set of patterns and visual patterns and things that happen to make sense just looking at the guitar. I progressed from that to wanting to, uh, you know, do more musically with it and know, uh, you know, all of the harmonies better and just approach it from the point of view of, of playing music on it as opposed to the guitar being the center of my, my thinking and my rationale. Mm -hmm. you know? So in the trio uh, format, you've decided just to use that one guitar. Is it a hollow body guitar? Yeah, it's, is that a, correct? it's a it's an arch top. It's a what we it's a Barker guitar. It was made mm -hmm. by Bill Barker in uh, 1965. And I know that you still uh, use uh, uh, you go out and perform in rock and roll circumstances in different situations. Do you still have the effects and pedals and use those at, at times? Well, I have a I have a nice old Stratocaster that mm -hmm. uh, seems to eliminate the need for about six pedals, and I, and I have a <laughs> And I have a great old Mesa Boogie amplifier that's about 10 years old. And I don't, I don't seem to need much except, uh, yeah. except that right there. Right. It sounds great. Well, we're going to hear two more songs. One, a standard uh, by Juan Teasel, made famous by the Ellington Orchestra Caravan. And the next one called Quentin. Who was that named after? Quentin's named after a little dude that I know up, uh, in the, <laughs> up uh, north where I live. And uh, he's a trumpet player. Mm -hmm. Nice little kid, nice player. And uh, named the blues after him. Oh, well, that's beautiful. All right, we're going to... Get back to the music now with Frank Portalese, Brian Sandstrom, Rusty Jones, and uh, we're going to hear Caravan, Quentin, all right here on Uncle Izzy's Jazz Jamboree.
This is Uncle Izzy's Jazz Jamboree. I'm your host, Barry Winograd, and today we've been enjoying Frank Portalee's trio. Guitarist Frank Portalee's, bassist Brian Sandstrom, and at the drum set, Mr. Rusty Jones. The four songs we heard, Hail Fredonia, These Foolish Things Remind Me of You, Caravan, and Quentin. I'm Barry Winograd saying until next time, support live jazz, and we'll see you right here on Uncle Izzy's Jazz Jamboree.